When I say that the commoners love death, I'm not talking about them being suicidal. That's not what it's about. It's about their attitude towards life. Commoners have an aversion to engaging in life itself. They want a secure place, a place that's predictable, a place where they have a sense of control. Now, people that come from a village where their whole life, let's say till they're 20, they've known everyone, they are, they are often attached to this sense of control so much that they either never leave the village, but even if they leave the village, they remain this village mentality. They are frightened of change. Wherever they go, they want to reproduce what they, what they know. Then you have folks who have the same would be the city. They're so attached to urban life and all the dangers of urban life that for them to leave urban life, well, not really life, but to leave the urban environment for them is like going back to the Stone Ages, which never actually happened. And then you have folks who are a bit wealthy. They're not the super, super rich, but they are a bit wealthy and they are more open-minded because they realize that change is necessary and inevitable in life. Not only because you become older, not only because some people pass away and new ones are born, also because without flexibility, you stagnate and without flexibility, you become depressed. And without flexibility, you become like a robot. And you're not designed to operate as a robot. But common folks, they want to hold on. But this holding on will make them sick. That's why in the late 19th century, and especially in the early 20th century, holidays were introduced. I'm not talking about holidays like Christmas, and I'm talking more about vacations. That's the right word, vacations, were installed so the employees, I'm saying the working class, could get relief for what they were doing. And the purpose of the vacation is to give the employees some compensation that they can spend however they want. And this works. We have it till this day. But the construct of vacations give the illusion as if people are open-minded even though they're still holding on. Now look, if your ancestors used to bake bread a certain way, and that type of bread is healthy, you don't have to unlearn that. You can receive that heritage, you can hold on to that heritage, okay? If your parents or ancestors used to be excellent fishermen of, or they, that's was their expertise, then you can um, hold on to that. There's nothing wrong with holding on in itself. But the moment holding on becomes toxic and dangerous, you need deliverance. Common people don't want to be delivered. They just want relief. That's why those who rule the world construct the world, construct the world in such a way that they can get relief while still being enslaved. And that's why many don't want deliverance at all because they think they are free. They think that they're doing well, even though they're falling apart. They love that. They love the absence of life, but at the same time, you want the benefits of life. That's why you have this political system in which the politicians are their informal, <laughs> informal hitmen <laughs> to get things done for them. <laughs> to get things done for them without them having to take the risks. For example, let's say that you have a population and there's this, let's say you have a population and there are many Chinese people living there. And let's say there's a strong sentiment against the Chinese. People think they're annoying, they're talking too loud. And remember, in Chinese you speak in tones because you say one word with the wrong tone, you mean something com completely different. So, they have to speak in tones, so sometimes they uh, uh, sound a bit loud. But the people in a community, they take this as an um, excuse to project things on the Chinese population. So now, because they don't want to face themselves, they want actions taken against the Chinese so that no attention goes to them. So, but they're not going to come out and say, we hate the Chinese, we bought them out. Because Chinese uh, provide jobs for them. 
what will happen is you'll have a right-wing politician that will come and he will talk more about our people first our people first he will and the people with this issue against Chinese will feel validated because politician isn't saying our people only because if he would say that it would be obvious that this is racist this is out of line but because he puts the focus only on his own people people unconsciously realize oh so he's not for those other folks so now they will energize this political figure to act out their hatred towards the Chinese folks that's often the motivation behind political movements covert hatred in which people don't want to take the risk for their lives and act out against tar the target of the hatred so they want a group of people to do it for them on their behalf so they can get the benefits if it's so that there is a minority in a country that's a bit wealthy and the majority is resentful towards it they will seek for some political figure to tax that other group more so that they can so that that other group will lose the wealth they have it's not that they the majority want more wealth it's that they don't want them to have wealth that's often the motivation behind political movements why because they love debt and because they can't stand it when you have more options than they they want to take action against you they want you to embrace debt just like they have embraced it there are even people who say openly that they they want to live forever because if they live forever then their earthly relationships would make sense so the, the only reason why you value people around them is because of their short lifespan that's quite extreme but you have folks that think that way they love that that's why you can't be unequally yoked with them it's getting on the vent well that's it for now keep a cream with christ and be at peace.